the place of rest, quietness, and peace in the name of Jesus. And he invites you, that just like he invited the Jews in the first century, to come to him to find rest for your soul. Hear me now, you are running, you're seeking, you're struggling, you're striving, you're fighting, you're loving, and you're searching in an effort to find what only Jesus, the Christ, can give you. True rest and peace is only found in Jesus the Christ. Let me talk to you a minute. Jesus was talking to the religious rulers of the nation of Israel at that time. He was talking to the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He was around about way reminding them that their forefathers were under a yoke of bondage to King Nebuchadnezzar because of their disobedience to the law. And yet, and, 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 and yet in the first century, they were under the bondage of the Roman government. And they were waiting for their Messiah to come and relieve them from their bondage of, Roman, of that Roman government. See, they had an idea that the Messiah was going to come with a blazing saddle, with a sword and a shield, and he was going to slay the Roman government and give them the land. But what they did not understand, that Jesus came so much more for something so much better. So in these couple of verses, Jesus inviting you, just like he did the people in the first century, to enter into a relationship with him. Jesus is calling you to salvation today because coming to Jesus is salvation. The Bible says, whosoever hath the Son has life. Whosoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. <coughs> okay, true enough, you're alive, you're breathing, you got a roof over your head, clothes on your back, you came, you got something to eat. I talked to a guy today, he said he was a secularist. He tried to break it down and told me he was an atheist. I knew exactly what he was talking about. I told him even atheists is going to have to bow to Jesus. So that's what he said. I, I, bid him, I bid him peace, and he went on his way. But I said that to say, you may be alive, and you're breathing. You got a good job. You got your stimulus check. You got roof on your head, clothes on your back. But without Christ, you're dead. You're a dead man walking. You might as well be on the death row at the, uh, at the Federal Correction Center because you're the walking dead, amen. Amen, you're a television series. In the Old Testament, there is no other, there is salvation and no other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which to be saved, and that name is Jesus. See, when you come to Jesus, you are given peace with God. For Romans 5, 1 says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that awesome to know that once you come to God, God will see you as if you never sinned? You see, he won't remember those things you used to do. He won't remember that you pushed the lady down the stairs, or that you used to smoke crack cocaine, or that you used to steal cocaine, or that you sexually abused that young girl or that young boy. As bad as it is, once you come to God with a broken heart and a contrite spirit, the Bible says he will remember those things no more. And he will throw them as far as the east is from the west. You are given rest from your attempts to please God when you come to God through his son, Jesus Christ. For the Bible says, for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. See, I be out on the streets, and I talk to a lot of people, and they always say, well, I'm a good person. I go to church. I don't bother nobody. Yeah, but your works don't save you, I try to tell them. You're saved by grace, through faith. You have to put your faith in Jesus Christ and follow him to be saved, not because you're a good person. The Bible says every man does what is right in his own sight, but the end thereof is death. So your being good won't save you. The Bible says no liar shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So if you ever told a lie, that wipes you from being good. Jesus said if you hate somebody in your heart, you're guilty of murder. So if you hate somebody, that makes you a murderer in the eyes of God. So that wipes you from your self-righteousness of thinking you are good. The Bible said there is none righteous, no, not one. You are given rest concerning your salvation when you come to Christ. Romans 8.16 says, The Spirit of God 
bear witness with your spirit that you are a child of God. You are given rest about your future. John 6.37 says, anyone who comes to me, I will by no means cast him out. Isn't that awesome to know Jesus Christ will not cast you out? Isn't that awesome to know that he said, no man shall pluck you from my hand? He said, I give to them eternal life. And this life is in his son. And he shall never perish, nor neither anyone shall snatch him out of his hands. 